Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks and welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now today's video is about an episode that took place during the Breton Wars of Succession, 1351. Now it's not a battle, it's an, an episode, an incident, uh, where two towns had fallen out in Brittany and the knights challenged each other to individual combat, but it then escalated to they would have two lots of 30 attacking each other. It's called the Combat of the 30. And then it went a stage further. Chivalry took over and they are upholding the honour of two separate ladies. Joan, Duchess of Brittany of the House of Blois and Jean Montford of the House of Montford. Now, if you'd have seen my last episode, uh, episode nine of the Hundred Years' War, you would have seen that uh, the House of Blois supported by the King of France, Philip VI, and therefore the House of Montford is supported by Edward III, King of England. So the episode has escalated. It is now this chivalric business, the combat of the 30. So I suppose before I uh, get into the combat of the 30s, we ought to explain a little bit about chivalry. Now, you probably know as much as I do, if not more. Chivalry, you can uh, trace it all the way back to Charlemagne. And uh, it, it comes, so I understand, from Chevalier, the, the mounted nobleman on a horse. So chivalry is, is more attached to, to the noble knight upon his steed, a cavalry kind of thing. Uh, upholding the truth and the honour and defending the weak. But uh, Edward III escalated this when he formed the Order of the Garter. 1348, uh, when 24 noblemen will be accelerated up into this great noble chivalric organisation. And the French followed suit. 1351, John II, he formed the Order of the Star, and that was you know, an imitation, I suppose, of the Order of the Garter. For the French, though, sadly, many of the members of the Order of the Star were killed at the Battle of Poitiers. Uh, very sad for them, but uh, it just goes to show the idea of chivalry from here on really does grow in romance. It's the idea of 60 men fighting it out to the death, in some cases, for the honour of ladies. So the combat of the 30, uh, basically what happened was two Breton knights early in 1351 fell out. Uh, there was Jean de Beaumanoir and Robert Bemborough, and uh, they, it was a personal challenge until it was decided by Robert uh, to turn it into a pas de arms, 30 men on each side. It's gonna be a battle. Now there was a, what do you call him, a chronicler, Jean de Bell, said this was a magnificent chivalric matter, right? It's a show. Thousands of people are going to turn up. It's going to be the biggest joust you can imagine, except for one thing. It's not a joust. They're going to fight to the death. Now they meet at the halfway oak between the castle of Josselin and Plumel. The two armies set up facing each other. And don't forget, this is supposed to be a great chivalric occasion. People must have been so excited. Now, we don't know the full details. Yeah, there are pictures, there are different accounts. So I've kind of taken a little bit from everybody. The beginning, so I understand, is on horseback. Now, I don't have 60 knights on horseback, I'm afraid. Not at the moment. Uh, so I've just got two groups to represent them charging at each other. Now I have seen a cavalry charge with 30 lancers and the ground absolutely shook and wow what a spectacle. But what you have here is 60 armed knights, 30 on each side charging towards each other. Can you imagine the clash, the bang as they clash together. Those who fall, they will now fall to foot combat. It was a bloody affair. Six men lay dead when the whole thing stops. For refreshment, don't forget, this is a chivalric episode. So refreshments have been had. There are six dead men on the field. The crowds must have been roaring when they re-engage. 
Now, as you'll notice, they're all on foot. So I'm taking as much information as I can from different accounts. They now engage. In no time at all, apparently Robert Benborough is actually uh, fatally wounded. But what the English uh, do now is they form into a tight formation. So let's get rid of some of their loose men. This tight formation is so good that the French can't crack it and they're having problems. So they are advancing, but they're not getting anywhere because of this almost hedgehog of the, of the English. When this happens, a Breton knight has remounted. Now, don't forget, everybody's on foot. He's remounted his horse and he charges into the English position there smashing his way all the way through. As he does that, the French then attack. At the end of the whole business, the English, uh, the Montford faction surrender now. At the end of it, there are nine of the Montford household are dead and six of the Blois are dead. And every single combatant apparently was injured. This becomes a legend. This chivalry thing, this chivalric episode in it. There are poems and songs written about it of how the Montfords were defeated and Robert was evil because the way he treated the locals. There's lots of stories come out of this. But it hides one little fact is that uh, a Breton knight rode into the formation of foot soldiers, breaking them up. The English says that was not chivalry. The English says, bad form. And me as an Englishman, I reckon they cheated. But it's down to you to decide. You see, this episode had no effect on the outcome of the wars of the Breton succession. It simply had no effect. It was just one of those little episodes that I thought I'd share with you. It's quite something. No bowmen involved. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed our little video there. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you remember, turn on the notification button and you'll see what's coming next. Uh, now, before I go, I uh, need to just give a shout out for a couple of my Patreon members. I've got to read this one because you'll love this name. Count Bratcula. <laughs> That's amazing. And Sebastian Bender. Hey, guys. Thanks a million. See you all soon.